What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking game franchise revival. With all these remakes and remasters that have hit the scene over the last few years, all hit in moderate to extremely bloody successful, it's got me thinking about those franchises that just sort of dwindled out of fashion. Now these aren't the best games in the world and by far are they the worst games in the world, but should another title be announced for any of these, I, oh boy, I would... I would just mop that up, mop that up. It's a list video. I'm doing list content now. Content in the form of lists to do a video game. How original, let's move on. What's the first game, Ben? It really annoys me how the is synonymous with people now thinking you're copying PewDiePie, but it's just, it's the perfect segue. It, it's just, pr first game. Prototype reminds me of the kid at school who was always just kind of a dick for no particular reason. He wouldn't pick or bully on anyone, but at the same time he was super unfriendly. He just sort of kept himself to himself. He was the unaware edgelord of tomorrow. But at some time in this metaphor's timeline, you were going to be partnered up with him for a double period of science through no fault of your own. You're thinking, great, you're in for an extremely long, boring class where you're going to be doing all of the work, only to have this edgelord start talking to you in just, you know, general chit chat. You find out you've got quite a lot in common and he pulls his weight with the work and the project. You both seem to have a somewhat decent time together. Only for him to revert back to normal after the class is done. You don't talk to him for the rest of your time at school. What a metaphor. Did that make sense? I know what I'm talking about. I wrote the script a few weeks ago. It might be a bit shit. <laughs> Yeah, Prototype was kind of like that. It's an action-adventure game, I guess. It's sort of, uh, I don't know, kind of like an emo crackdown, except you play as the bad guy. But not really. He's sort of like a, an anti-hero. But again, not really. The game was a fun power trip once it got going and you unlocked enough powers to be leaping and gliding all over the place, absorbing different identities before turning your arm into a blade and killing absolutely everyone. It was angry, dumb fun. The sequel, although it did much of the same thing, was an improvement in my eyes and actually had me complete the game to 100%, collectibles and all. It had some great concepts that didn't quite reach their full potential and I think enough time has passed now where they can just start from scratch with a more flushed out story and develop on those unique mechanics that it introduced. If we're to ever see a prototype reboot or even a prototype 3 you can bet my bottom dollar i'll be putting i'll, I'll buy it I'll, I'll buy it moving on <laughs> thief 2014 was a good game i've said it i've committed let's go no i didn't play the older games in the series so no i wasn't massively let down by the quality of thief 2014 but damn it it was a bloody good game so i'm going to keep this one brief and just absolutely but bomb through this as i'm a massive whore for stealth games where you get a bow and arrow you get to look super cool when you know that edgelord vibe i love it the ye olde england setting drizzled in sort of semi steampunk and supernatural elements provided for a great atmospheric title which surprisingly created some really great intense horror kissed sequences the failure of 2014 steve came from its story being bland and uninspired as well as the gameplay felt very restrictive when moving around the different city hubs which were divided up between pretty lengthy load screens it would always break up your flow of gameplay and there were some performance issues here and there it also carried an art style that wasn't quite fully consistent in areas where it really should have been and then became overbearingly gothic and drab in others it painted a very hard sell for old fans returning to the series and just came across as very meh for any potential new fans its identity hadn't been fully realised, turning most new players away and leaving returning fans with a bad thief game, but what most can agree is a pretty decent burglary simulator. Now this one really is a shame to me as looking back, even with hindsight you can see that all of the pieces are there, they're all just slightly undercooked and not put in the right order. This one in my eyes 100% deserves another shot and it's always in the back of my mind whenever we get to an E3, is this going to be the year? Probably not, but you know, a boy can hope. Next game, Skate 4! It's not obvious at all. Is that one too obvious? Well, to everybody says Skate 4. Um, what else? SSX. Okay, so this one already tried a bit of a revival back in 2013, but it was really bloody good. SSX is just a good time. Massive mountains with multiple routes down, crazy opportunities to get the best air and the most ludicrously long combos twinned with a masterfully mixed soundtrack. What is not to like? Now, unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna ever see this franchise again. I recall EA actually pushing this pretty big back in the day and wanting it to take off just like it did in the glory days of sports games, but it was not meant to be. Which is a shame because this is one of the first games where I actually fell into a community. Players would set times on certain mountains, leave those little geotags lying around for you to try and find and grab, and ultimately always be improving on your scores for bragging rights. Like I said, this was the first game I managed to carve out a little bit of a community for myself and play with random players all across the world. Competing in this cat and mouse game with our scores and it might just be the nostalgia talking, but it was bloody amazing. 
If you were like me and you were hitting the mountains back in 2012, then I hold no doubt in my mind that you can relate and understand my plea to bring this one back. For everyone else, sadly, you've missed an absolute golden time. And like I said before, I don't think it's ever gonna return. So moving on, next game. Tenchu, I don't know what one, because I can't remember. Now bear with me on this one as my memory is a little hazy as the only thing I can remember about this game was that it was fucking incredible. Genuinely where I think my love for stealth games started. A friend of mine was staying around and he turned up with this in hand. He had just been to trade in a bunch of his older games and he picked this up with no idea what it was. The only thing that swayed his decision was that the box art appealed to him. We popped the disc in and for the next two days I just watched him play. I think he was staying around my house for the weekend or something. I, I, like I said, my, my memory's really hazy on this one. But along came the Monday after the weekend and after school I ran to Game Station. Rip, like never forget, F, whatever the, 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 the funny thing is. Traded in and I got myself a copy of Tenchu. One of the first games where I saw that you would be rewarded for getting through totally unseen and not killing a single person. It blew me away. Thinking about it now, it's sort of like Hitman, but set in old Japan and you're a ninja. Bring it back. Now this next one is just a bit sad and it's, uh, you know, let's get some Fs in the chat for, for this one. Another game from 2012, but unlike SSX, a lot of people actually played this one and a lot of people bloody loved it. For the uninitiated, Sleeping Dogs is an open world GTA-esque type of game where you play as an undercover cop infiltrating the triads. The story is bloody great with you climbing higher and higher up the crime family, pushing the limits of Wei Shen's moral duty. Whilst having his own side, the police begin to question whether he's gone too far and is now a double agent. It was, ah, oh, it was, bring this one back, I love this one. Street racing, cockfighting and martial arts among a slew of other activities really helped bring this world to life and make it stand out from the other GTAs and Saints Rows of the world. Plus it was set in Hong Kong. How many times do we get games that are set in Hong Kong, yet alone modern Hong Kong? The location alone was something that most Western audiences hadn't seen before in a game, and only added to its appeal. Yet Square Enix set the bar too high, and although the title was received both well with critics and audiences alike, Square thought it undersold and underperformed, and cancelled any plans of a sequel and killed the franchise. Now this one has always had sort of an underground rumbling for Square to revive, and it's getting louder and louder, so it would make sense that we would see this again. However, when the Definitive Edition dropped not so long ago, Square did restate the fact that there are currently no plans to develop a sequel, and so the only time you're going to be hearing about Sleeping Dogs is in videos like this. How sad. How sad. Next game. Now this last one's easy, Sonic Adventure. Strong level design and Sonic running fast. That's all you need to do. Focus all of your efforts there. You'll do a great job. That's it, job done. And that's my list. We flew through that. Now, before we end the video, let's just dive into some quick honorable mentions because why not? I didn't want to write a full thing about them, I guess. Dead Island. Yes, I know Dead Island 2 hasn't exactly been canceled yet, but where the bloody hell is it, mate? This is a game we've been waiting on for what feels like forever. Have we seen gameplay for it? Have they released? gameplay for it because could google it but i'm pretty sure it doesn't exist moving on banjo kazooie now i know that this is just nostalgia talking but you know i'm 25 this year i miss my childhood give me a good banjo game samurai jack yeah let's bring this franchise back this is the one that's most realistic that we're going to see again samurai jack shadow of a q is an absolute hidden gem on the ps2 but if you've got that game still kicking around boot it back up, you know it's good. If you've not played it, you're probably not going to because why would I convince you? But you should, because it's bloody great. And it's my list, so why not bring that back? It got canceled on TV really quickly. I think it only got like two seasons. Who am I talking, who am I looking at? The Scooby-Doo franchise. Now this one, I, jokes aside, this one, just hear me out on it. Reboot this as a gritty detective story, photorealistic dog and everything. Take the story from Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights, put it into a sort of Resident Evil-esque atmosphere and horror. That, job done. That's a bloody good game right there. Make it. 